Pat here again from Rain Country Homestead. God is good all the time. The honeydew list never stops around here. <laughs> We're always looking for places to, new places to grow stuff uh, because of our limited uh, growing area. Mama Rain wanted to grow some lettuce on this wall here. So I'm gonna throw, get, throw together a uh, set of shelves. They're gonna be kind of freestanding. I might fasten them to the wall. Most of the weight bearing is going to be on the shelves themselves. Uh, they just might have a, a small attachment that attaches to the wall so they don't tip over. Uh, we'll play that as it goes. I, what I wanted to do is I kind of wanted to case the window in. And what I mean by that is I wanted to kind of build around the window. I didn't want to make a shelf and just have it up against the window. It wouldn't look right. I kind of wanted to make it look kind of custom. So I measured the distance on the window and made all my other measurements for the shelf, the set of shelves to actually just sit on the outside and down below the window. So what I did here is I drew a simple picture to kind of illustrate uh, what I'm going to do in order to accomplish this. So here again is the window that you've seen in the back and then I kind of want to case it a little bit here and eventually leave room for maybe put some trim around the window. So uh, these are the measurements that I came up with in order to make that happen. I need to make two shelves at 77 inches long. And so by the time I put three quarter inch dados on each side, it'll come up to 75 and a half inches wide on the inside. That's uh, inside of this upright to the inside of this upright. And I want to make them 18 inches center to center in between the two shelves. So that gives her plenty of room to grow strawberries or lettuces or uh, other herbs that she wants to grow. Also going to make this in such a way that if one wants to in the springtime he can actually maybe put some visqueen over the face of this and you kind of utilize it as a, as a mini greenhouse and being as it's going to be up against the shop and you get the morning sun that also uh, is going to benefit in getting that morning warmth and getting give, giving the plants a uh, head start and lack like a greenhouse. So as you can see I have my helper here, Cody. I don't think I could do it without him. Mill's going to make a great uh, outdoor workbench. <laughs> but I got a couple of 2x8s selected for this job. I pressure wash these off and uh, I'm going to, I'm thinking about leaving them rough. I'm going to cut them to length uh, one at 77 and the other at 34 it's gonna have some rough spots in it we're not really concerned about that we kind of like a, the rustic look but we'll see when we get these cut out as to how how thick I want to make these things so the first thing I want to do is I want to come over here and square up the end with a speed square over 77 inches so this is going to be the side it's going to be 34 inches So now I have both my shelves cut, and I know what's overkill. Uh, I figured one inch is probably too too narrow. I could have made some center supports in there, but two inch I'm assured will definitely hold. <laughs> okay, who uh, who gets the points for seeing my mistake? So this should be 12 inches, and that should be 18 inches. 18 inches will give us height up off the deck so the if the chickens ever get up there they won't get in to the plants that are on this shelf this is the face I'll measure down two inches and that will be the center of my dado joint and I'll measure up from this side 18 inches and that will be the center of my other dado joint 
So if I wanted to go with a narrow board, these are full sawn two inch boards. So if I wanted to go with a, a surface four sides board that you'd buy in the store, you know, it'd be an inch and a half by seven and a half inches. Uh, this is full eight by two. So this is just gonna mark where my center is. So if I'm going with a two inch board, I can mark a reference mark to the outside on that 19. And on the bottom side of 17, I'll know where to saw the dado in. And that will give me my dado for my top shelf. So this will be the inside. That will be the outside. So I put an X right here on the uh, back side so I know which side goes to the fence. Because these are roughs on boards, I'm not 100% sure they're totally square. So because I measured with the uh, speed square on this side, and it and this line is square to the back side of this board because of the speed square the way I have it positioned because I have the square side up against this face so I have a 90 degree angle on that face now if I flip this over you know, that may or may not be square so I always like to try to make sure that I know which side that I squared from in order to make this part here up against the fence when I when I cut in the dado joint with the radial arm saw. Before I do that I want to verify and make sure that these boards are for sure uh, two inches. It's just a shy two inch and that's one and three quarters on the other end. So maybe what I should do is surface these down to one and seven eighths and I cut these dado joints at one and seven eighths and that'll make a nice tight fit. If I want this to look rough cut, I can surface one side and make that the bottom and then you won't be able to see the surface side versus the rough side. I'm trying to leave it rough just for a rough look. I use the planer set up at 1 and 7 eighths inches to surface these down so they're exactly the same from end to end and then I'll make my dado joints an inch and 7 eighths as well in order to make a nice tight fit for the shelving. The shelving is the only thing that's actually going to be going through the planer. Now I want my best looking rough side up where the flower pots are going to sit and determine which side that I want to face. Well this side here has some loose knots in it so I think I'll, ha I'll surface this side but that will be the bottom. This will be the top. This one here good nice tight knots on this side and this has the uh, middle of the log as you can see right here the log center so it kind of crowns a little bit like this so I want to go ahead and take that off and then that will be the bottom so what I want to do is I want to go to my narrowest dimension which means this right here is the narrowest portion of all the wood and that's actually one and three quarters so what I'll do is I'll surface both of these down to one and three quarters in order to get them all the same dimension. Start my first cut at one and fifteen sixteenths and just work work down the board from there. These boards here I've had for years. <laughs> They're actually cut on a circular saw, not that band mill that I just got. These are ready to go. I may run one edge through the table saw, measure the narrowest board, and then cut everything to match the narrowest board so they're all the same width as well. So the narrowest, narrowest uh, point on both of those boards were right at eight inches.
So now that these are a quarter inch smaller, I need to take an eighth of an inch off of each side to center that where we want to be. So we're going to take that down an eighth and take this side down one eighth of an inch. Now I could have saved myself a little bit of time. I mean, I know better with rust on lumber. It's uh, hardly ever perfect, especially if it's been setting for a while and dried out. But uh, I should have just went ahead and surfaced at least one side on all boards. Well, not necessarily the side boards, but the, the two shelf boards. And, you know, verified the thickness, verified the width, and made everything right. And then done my measurements for uh, where my dado lines should have gone. Anyway, I'll get to cutting these dado joints. So I'm going to cut those uh, three quarters of an inch deep and an inch and three quarters inch wide. Okay, here we are over here at the radial arm saw. And I have a dado blade installed on the radial arm saw. Generally, I leave this on here and use these for all of my dado and rabbit cuts. Generally, I do all my cutoff work with this miter saw. I got my height set up to where I'm, I'll uh, cut in three quarters of an inch into the top of this and basically what I do is I mark down three quarters of an inch on the board and then I just run the blade up to that mark and just raise or lower the elevation of the cutter head uh, in retrospect to that line. Okay, we'll see how that fares. So I mark out some feet for the sides. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. I'm going to go ahead and use a compass, but you can take. Um, just an arbitrary round item that looks good to you. Here I got a coffee can. Receptacle or bucket up and say, well, I don't like that because it's going to make it too narrow right in here. That's going to make the feet too small. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an arch. And what that's going to do is going to solve a couple of things. One, it'll make it look a little more dressed up. And number two, it'll have less contact on the deck so you're going to have a less susceptibility for for rot to occur if you have less surface area touching the deck whereas if I didn't cut this off the whole the whole underneath of the uh, side would be sitting on the deck I didn't like the looks of that uh, this is just a wax container you know that looks pretty good I've got I've got plenty of material here for a, a, a leg and the method for that would be, is I find out basically where the center is. I mean, you can have them kind of, you can have the feet kind of coming in a little bit if you wanted to. Uh, if you wanted that to happen, be above center, and then mark out your line or trace the circumference of the wax container, but you want to make sure that you're centered. So if I if I set this up, I would find out equal parts like that's one and a half inches this side over here is one and a half inches and then I just find out how far up I wanted to go and then draw a line across to my other board so I can duplicate it or you can cut this one out and then trace it onto this other board it's not going to be as accurate uh, because when you run through here with the jigsaw the blade is going to you know, it's not going to be perfect when it runs it runs around there. I'm going to use a, uh, a compass and work it out that way. So what I want to do with this, I want to find the center. And half of 8 is 4. So 
I measure out four inches and mark a line. I'll do that over here on the other one as well while I'm at it. So four inches to center. And then I just go just barely up above. I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch above the edge of the uh, board. You can make this circle as big or, or small as you want to. It can go in or it can go out. And I've got it set up to where I think it looks pretty good. So I'm going to draw a arc. It's like a half circle. And do the same thing on this side. And then I'll go up here and this will be the top. So you can see that the top of the shelf is going to be right here. So that's going to be an inch from the top down below. So I'm just going to take half of the distance and scribe a line half inch down. Just a real light line. Same thing on the other side. This is just a, a random lid from something. And I'm just going to go to where the lid just touches the top of the board and just touches the line that I described. So I just mark a line right there. Go to the other side, duplicate my process. decided to do come in here and put three different fasteners in the sides here to secure the shelves to the sides so I'm going to come down here right at two inches draw a light line same thing on the second shelf and center on that was 18 inches now I want to come in here halfway and put a fastener, let's say an inch and a half in. That looks pretty good. An inch and a half in and put another fastener. So I'll have three fasteners per shelf side. So that's going to be one and a half, one and a half and four. Now I'll pre-drill and put a countersink in and I'll put the fasteners in and I'll put a little dowel plug inside here to make it look cute of course. These are three inch T25 Torx drive screws. In the middle one first. I generally like to get the center first because it brings the outside two in parallel to each other uh, to the end of the board. Whereas if you if you start a bolt or if you start a screw in here, it's going to suck up tight and it's going to want to make this end come out a little bit. I'll just set this up to where we can, it'll be easier to get to the countersinks now. Now, this will put a little bit of glue in there. This is just Tight Bond 3, it's waterproof exterior and interior glue. Just need a little bit to keep that dowel plug from coming out. Tap them in with a soft mallet hammer so you don't mar the tips of them. It just kind of dresses it up a little bit. All 
Okay, we'll go put it in place and see if it fits. So if I feel that it seems like it's sitting there pretty good, it don't look like it's going to rock or fall over. So I don't think I need to put any brackets on here, but if I need to put a bracket on there to stabilize it any, I can just put a bracket up underneath here. As usual, he made it a lot fancier than I expected. Thank you, Mr. Rain. Oh, yeah. I want to keep being able to come around here. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully that gives you guys some ideas. I saw it's a pretty simple shelf. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.